Hey everyone, um, welcome to the session. My name is Uwe Fasnacht and we've got Paul Hag here from Maven Blue as well. Uh, what we're going to be doing in the next uh, 40 minutes, which gives us a bit of time, which is great. What we're going to be doing in the next 40 minutes is we're going to talk about how Maven Blue offers modeling services to the financial institutions using our very innovative serverless um, platform called IBM Cloud Code Engine. The way we're going to be structuring this is I'm going to be probably spending about you know, 20 minutes um, not just talking about the Code Engine product for, but actually demoing it and showing, showing sort of a Hello World demo. And then we're going to hand it over to Paul, who is then going to be talking about this very cool, very well-fitting, innovative platform that Maven Blue has built on top of Code Engine. Okay. Um, with that, let me start off with a few slides to sort of set the stage, and then we're going to do a do a Hello World demo. So let me share my screen. Um, and here we go. And let me show you some slides. There we go. Okay, that's the title of our talk. As I said, first we're going to be talking about sort of the strategic IBM serverless solution called IBM Cloud Code Engine. And I think this title slide with the tagline sort of says it all, right? It's run any code, which means it's like a multi-purpose platform that is built to basically handle anything you throw at it. We'll talk about that and I'll show you that actually. And do it very easily, right? One of the big value propositions of Code Engine is it's got a simple user interface that gets you going very quickly. I'm going to show you how to do a Hello World demo with three clicks, literally, and you've got your first app deployed. And of course, at scale, right? We're talking about a cloud service here, so it scales basically infinitely in the cloud um, up, and it scales down. As a matter of fact, it scales down even to zero, right? If you're not, uh, your app is not doing any useful work, if your container is not receiving any HTTP requests, and you pay only for what you use. We basically measure every 100 milliseconds how much CPU, how much memory, your containers, your apps, your jobs, your functions are using and are charging you based on that. If you scale down to zero, right, um, we stop charging you. Okay, so the idea here for Code Engine is to make it super simple for developers to get their stuff running on the cloud because you as a developer, you want to focus on providing customer value, right? Writing lines of code, getting out features. What you don't want to do is worry about all the, you know, the, the, the stuff, the GORP in the back end, you know, VMs and containers and security and pods and, and clusters and, and ingress and egress, what the heck's that anyway, right? And networking policies and, and stuff like that, right? As a developer, you want to focus on your code and push it out in the cloud. Um, as I said, cloud, right? You only want to pay for when your stuff is actually, your code is actually doing something useful. And ideally, as a developer, we only want to use one user experience. We want to use one CLI. We want to learn one API. We want to learn one platform. So think of Code Engine sort of as this unified platform that serves a wide variety of developers. And here are some examples, right? The first type of developer that we serve is a developer that we would call like a container native developer. This is a person, you now she knows what Docker is. She's got Docker running on her laptop. She, she knows how to write a, you know, a container image. She's running that on, on her laptop, fantastic. Now she wants to take that container and she wants to have that container run in the cloud. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be showing you during the demo. Um, she does not want to worry about sizing a cluster. She doesn't even know what a you know, Kubernetes cluster really is. She just wants her Docker container running. Um, and she certainly doesn't want to worry about securing and versioning and updating that cluster. The next type of developer is sort of working at a higher abstraction layer. He writes source code 
and does not even know what a container is, right? So this is a developer that might have been using Heroku or Cloud Foundry or AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Source code, push it in the cloud for me, magically run that source code in the cloud. If you need to package it into a container, sure, do that, but don't ask me as the developer to do that. I want the platform to package my code into a container and then run it. The third type of developer that we're sort of aiming this at is maybe someone that doesn't think of himself as a software developer at all, right? Maybe this is someone that runs to run large batch jobs. So there's object stores sitting over here somewhere that's got like videos or that has, uh, I don't know, images. We have one customer in the healthcare services. They're sort of getting new genetic measurements. And once those measurements are there, he wants to run batch jobs, right? He wants to process that data. Um, and he basically only wants to specify the batch job, you know, run, I don't know, a hundred or a thousand of these in parallel, go to that object store, take the images, process them, stick them somewhere else. And then that developer wants the infrastructure to go away automatically, right? So think sort of as batch job, as a service batch job serverless, because he's not building up any infrastructure or provisioning it or tearing it back down. Here's my batch job. I wanted to scale out to 100, run it for me. And when it's done, right, just stop billing me. The fourth type of developer that we're addressing with Code Engine is sort of this very modern serverless or, or functions developer, right? She writes small snippets of code, maybe using something like AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, IBM Cloud Functions, and that code is event-driven typically, event-driven architectures, right? So the code listens for something to happen, right? Some topic is coming by on a, on a Kafka event stream or you know, something changes in, in an object store in the cloud or in a NoSQL database or, or maybe something happens like every hour or, or at midnight. And then that code runs, it does something. And when that code completes, she expects that we stop charging her as a platform, right? So these are four different types of developers that develop in different styles, that give different artifacts to the platform to deploy. And while a lot of the other cloud services out there have sort of individual services to handle these various type workloads and different types of developers, Code Engine and IBM Cloud is one single unified platform that handles all of this with one user interface to learn, one CLI, one API, right? And there's another advantage here is that if you run all of these different you know, applications, containers, batch jobs, functions on one unified platform, they can very easily and very securely, obviously, communicate with each other through that platform Right, without having to reach out and then the network policy have to be configured and the other service that you're connecting to, this is all running within one service. And then there's a third argument why it's a good idea to have one unified service. And that is that developers, and this is we're hearing a lot from customers, don't want to sort of pick and choose and have compromises. Just one very simple example. If you like AWS, right, and in the AWS space, let's say you're using AWS Lambda because you love functions and you love the idea that it scales to zero, right? Once the function is done, the infrastructure goes away, AWS stops charging you, great. But maybe that AWS function that you're running needs a lot of memory, needs a lot of vCPUs, high limits, or maybe that AWS Lambda function should run minutes or hours or maybe even days. Well, Lambda can't do that, right? In that case, sticking within AWS, you would have maybe have to use a service like Fargate. Fargate gives you high memory, can run for a long time, but it doesn't scale to zero, right? But you want it in AWS Lambda. So you sort of have to make compromises. While in Code Engine, there, we have none of these compromises. You can have something very long running with very high limits. It still scales to zero and all looks and feels the same in one single user interface. Now, before we go to the demo, this all sounds a bit magical. Before we go to the demo, 
I want to show you really quickly an architecture diagram of this because unlike some of our um, competitors out in the market, Code Engine is built completely on open source. How did we do this? Well, of course, there are physical machines and virtual machines, and these machines are sitting in IBM multi-zone regions around the world, in Dallas and in, in, in uh, Frankfurt and London and Tokyo and Sydney. Each one of these, we've sort of built this gigantic Kubernetes cluster, which is ready to run containers. Okay? And on top of that, we've put a technology called Knative. And Knative is a technology, an open source technology, that sort of deploys and scales containers. So as a user on the left-hand side, you come to Code Engine and you bring a container. That container is being handed to Knative. Knative deploys that container onto this gigantic Kubernetes cluster and scales it based on load, even down to zero. But what happens if you don't have a container? What happens if you just have source code, right? In that case, you can bring source code to the platform and we, the platform, will build the container for you. And we're using other open source technologies like Paketo build packs, uh, Tecton pipelines, Shipwright, right? To build a container, which then is again handed to Knative. Knative runs that container. What we've done basically is we are have built up this architecture stack of all of these open source technologies and we are managing that for you we are securing it for you we are updating it for you right we're rolling it forward um, you as the user just sort of see this beautiful user interface that you can bring your container batch job or app function to this user interface and that's exactly what I'm going to show you next. Okay. By the way, here's the link. If you want to try this out for yourself, I'll talk about a free tier um, after the demo, right? This is free to try it out. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to end the slideshow here. And I am going to go to the IBM cloud. Can you guys maybe a quick feedback? Can you see my screen here? Paul, can you see my screen here? Just yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I can see your screen. Perfect. Yeah. All right, great. So I'm going to go to the IBM cloud, and I'm already logged in because we've only got a few minutes to do a quick Hello World demo here, right? But this is sort of the landing page of, um, of Code Engine on the IBM cloud. Um, there's this concept of projects. Projects are basically where you're going to be putting things into, right? And right now I have a project in Tokyo. I've got one in Dallas. I've got one in Frankfurt. But let's get back to the overview screen because what I want to show you is how simple it is to launch your first Hello World application. So jump right in. We're asking you, hey, do you want to run a container or do you want to start with source code? Right? So basically we're asking, what do you have that you want to run? You already have a container, right? Then point us to the image or do you have source code? In that case, point us to the source code. So in this case, I already have a Hello World container built, and I'm going to just click on Start Creating. I'm going to click on Start Creating, and that was the first click I did. <laughs> what would you like to create, right? Now we know you've got a container already. You're not starting from source code. code. Would you like to create an application that continuously runs and serves HTTP requests? Or would you like to create a job that runs and completes and goes away. In this case, we're going to create an application. Okay, we're going to give it a name. Um, I am going to call it, I don't know, Hello Festival, right? And now I'm going to say, where should that, which project should that sit? Well, I'm just going to run, run it in Frankfurt. That's cool. What do you want me to run? Choose the code to run. And in this case, we're already telling you, hey, we've pre-populated this field with a hello world image. Of course, this is where you would enter your actual image, right? And it could be sitting out in Docker Hub or it could be sitting in a private container uh, registry. We're just gonna go with this. Then we're asking you, you know, things like what 
port you want your application to be listening on? Do you want this application, this container to receive public traffic or only be accessible from within a project? Or is, is, there, is there a private networking connectivity that you want to set up? We're asking you for runtime settings. How many instances of the container minimum? We're going to allow it to scale down to zero. How many maximum? I don't know, let's say to 10. How many CPUs and memory do I want to allocate per container? Down here, we have some scaling policies, and then I can put in some environment variables and so forth and so on. Note that so far, I've only done one single click, and I've added a name for my application, Hello Festival. Right? Here comes the second click. I'm going to click on Create. And with two clicks, I've deployed a Hello World application and my first container, an IBM Cloud Code Engine. It's literally that simple, right? So this is all live. What's happening right now is we're pulling the container from the registry, and then we're taking that container and we're handing it to Knative. Knative takes the container and drops it onto the Kubernetes cluster, boom, and we're done. Uh, it usually takes around 30 seconds, right? Ready to receive traffic. I'm going to test the application. Click on the upper right-hand side. And I'm going to send it a request. And boom. Hello world from Code Engine. Now I can only also just open up the application URL. Let me just uh, make this a little bit larger, right? Hello world from Code Engine. The name of the application is Hello Festival, and that is how it starts in the URL. Hello Festival. It ends, of course, with app Code Engine app domain dot cloud. Of course, you can put your own URL. You can point to your own URLs here, obviously. But something I want to point out is what you're seeing up here is you're seeing HTTPS. So we've automatically set up SSL for you. We've given you a certificate without you even noticing. You've got an HTTPS route to this, okay? So we can send another request, send another request, send another request. And then we're going to look at this over here and we can see that we've got running instances, right? So this is when we've deployed, now we've got running instances. We don't really have time for the demo um, to for, uh, to wait, but if we would wait a little bit, we would see this application scaling down to zero unless someone, one of you actually hits the URL. In that case, we're receiving traffic again, right? But this sort of way you can see this, and I'm not going to go into this uh, in, in great detail, but basically we can now create new revisions of this application. This new revision is then going to take automatically traffic and and become the latest revision that is completely seamless. So there's no outage in between. This is where the endpoints are. These are publicly visible, which is what we wanted. Here are the public URLs. These are the project only URLs. So these are the internal URLs. And now we still haven't scaled back down to zero. Usually it takes about a minute or two and we're probably not gonna wait that long. Okay, so what did I do? I went into Code Engine. I deployed a Hello World container in two clicks and just giving it a name. And it's literally that simple, right? And that's something I wanted to show you um, how simple Code Engine really is. And with that, we're going to go back to some slides and then we'll have Paul take over. Okay, one more thing on how much does this actually cost, what you're seeing here, very industry standard. We're giving you every uh, month, we're giving you 100,000 vCPU seconds free, 200,000 gigabytes seconds per month free. That is enough to run your personal side project on Code Engine for free. And after that, we're charging you per vCPU second, I don't know, like 0 0.32 millicents and, and, and we're charging per gigabyte second as well, right? So very industry standard pricing. Um, I'm not going to go through all the key features, going to make sure that Paul has enough time. But this is a very broad, very broad platform that sort of allows you to run almost any kind of a workload. Um, go to these links or quite frankly, just Google IBM Cloud Code Engine. The last thing I wanted to point out, if you are not a paid subscriber of IBM Cloud support, there is public support on Stack Overflow as well. Just look for IBM Cloud Code Engine. And with that, uh, having looked, you know, for 20 minutes at the platform, I really want to uh, turn it over to Paul for the next 20 minutes to actually talk about this really cool solution that Maven Blue has built on top of Code Engine, which I think, frankly, is a fantastic fit for the platform. And Paul, with that, I'll turn it over to you. You just tell me when to flip to the next slide. Yes. 
That's for sure. Yeah, well, let, let's first start with a short introduction in, uh, of Maven Blue. Uh, we're a company, company in the Netherlands. We're founded in 2016. Um, so uh, our very, very important to see we don't have any legacy burden. So we built a state-of-the-art technology and also looked uh, together with IBM to see how we can use uh, state-of-the-art technology for our platforms also uh, uh, for the future. Well, we focus on uh, software, delivering software as a service for financial institutions. And that's a niche in the market with two key figures. So we have massive amounts of calculations. It could be thousands, but also billions of calculations uh, to be done uh, overnight, to be done uh, real time, etc. cetera. Uh, these uh, financial institutions have really complex calculations. And for them, we make it uh, simple to, to execute them with a pretty simple on the outside uh, implementation. We have two product families. The first one is uh, on scenario projections uh, used in balance management, investments, decisions, and all kinds of uh, asset valuations like mortgage valuation. But these we use GPU technology for parallelization. And today we're also going to look at the enterprise pricing model. That's our solution built for pricing and portfolio management for, for insurance. And therefore, uh, we will definitely look into uh, how we uh, use Code Engine to scale out uh, uh, the technology, view technology for that one. So if we go to the next slide. Yeah, so a, sh a short introduction on our pricing management. We currently focus on PNC uh, products uh, lines for insurance. With our software, they develop and maintain their models, including the monitoring of those models. Uh, in these uh, are also used in uh, business decisions. And if you if you dive into the technology that will be used, that we will use for all uh, for the calculations, we use traditional mathematical and statistical methods like GLM models. Uh, that's stuff that's uh, used by most insurance uh, today, also. But we also apply machine learning uh, on top of that one to really uh, take it to the next level for them. So if we uh, go to the next uh, slide. Yeah, that's one important thing we will discuss today. It's uh, the use of HTO uh, for the development of our models and there a uh, recode engine comes into play. So what we have is we have a single uh, model with a lot of data, gigabytes of data. And if we want to process the workload, we typically need uh, 100 CPU seconds up to 100,000 CPU seconds, uh, including the, um, the uh, applying the machine learning. And one other key feature is that all of these calculations need to be done on demand. So end users, mostly actuaries, will use the system. And then by clicking on, on a button in our, in our solution, we will need to, um, to gain that workload uh, for, let's say, 100,000 CPU seconds. Um, one of the requirements we also talked through with uh, IBM uh, that we have multiple insurance and multiple users. So we want to have that on-demand workload per user, per insurance on the fly. And therefore, we uh, looked into Code Engine and see how we could use Code Engine to get that uh, scaled up capacity uh, for those uh, end users, but also specifically on their demand. So what do we have here? It's very interesting to look at that one. So we have HTO, HTO for running up uh, a lot of these calculations behind the scenes. And where there we have one user interface and a couple of nodes that together process all of these uh, workload. So what we, what we have in here is that when a user clicks on in our system on a button, we need to launch not only one node, but multiple nodes together working as a cluster to process that 
a load of data. And if you go to the next slide, we briefly talk to the current architecture. So what do we have now in our complete solution? We use a lot of the IBM services like IBM Cloud Services for the naming service load balancing. We have uh, our 24 server up and running EPM containers on the Kubernetes cluster. We currently have uh, a relational database, MySQL, in a virtual private cloud. And we have on Cogen Engine that on demand um, uh, nodes for each individual users. That's our current architecture. Go to the next slide. I will briefly show you what we intend to change something on the services and the object storage. So really move to IBM's MySQL and uh, object storage. But let's let's look let dive into the details of the code engine once more on the next slide. So what do we have in here? We have a single app. So we built one single app, but it's also deployed single tenant. So we have in this example, two insurance, that's insurance A and B. And we have five individual users using our EPM software. So the on demand, they would need a lot of capacity to online train within a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds their complete workload. And also the uh, workload depends on the volume that they're working on. So on our EPM software, we know if they have a, a small load of work or a big load of work. And then we use Code Engine and also what the you sh showed us. We use the C CLI API, but also trigger that from, from our virtual private cloud. So on demand in our EPM software, we launch multiple combinations of Code Engine nodes to process these individual tasks for that end user. And the interesting thing here is that that um, uh, user is waiting for the response of that full calculation to be finished. So the number of nodes that are really needed behind the scenes to process that, that data, we pass on extra information to those code engine nodes. And therefore, it spin, dynamically spins up the number of nodes that's that are required to fulfill this complete workload. And that's really a powerful thing. So having code engine in place, we can uh, support an unlimited number of uh, end users asking on-demand uh, workloads from our EPM software. And that's really a cool thing, which we could never achieve without IBM. Uh, and it, it's also, uh, let, let's show one example. So on the next slide, we have, this is uh, some of the screens of our uh, enterprise pricing management. And here you have a PNC product. On the left-hand side, you see a lot of the factors that are relevant for, for this product. And then the end user in here decides which of these factors uh, we need to use to calculate the model. So when, in this example, the end user chooses three of these factors, then triggers the calculate button. And then from our side, we spin up nodes using the code engine uh, APIs to fulfill this task. And if you go to the next slide, you can see one example. So what will happen when the end user triggers that button? We will launch that uh, uh, code engine node. In this example, we only have one node. If uh, in, in real life for big loads of data, there could be multiple, like 10 or, or 20 or 30 of these nodes up and running. And here we have one of these. So when the user clicks on the button, we spin up that container. We already have that container in place. We decide how many of these nodes uh, need to be launched. And Code Engine will launch these for us. So this is all behind the scenes. So the end user won't recognize anything of this one because that's hidden behind our EPM software. But we of course, when we monitor the system, we use this one to see uh, how, how the system performs and uh, how many nodes are really active, uh, actively uh, running. And the, and the cool thing in here also is that when this, these nodes spin up, they 
uh, they're spin up on demand, but they also shut down when the, when the full task is finished. So if we go to the next slide, you see the end user has triggered the button. So for some of these functionality, we can even do it online in, let's say, a couple of seconds, we can run a, a full portfolio, uh, run the, our functionality, and then the end user, once done, when the, the nodes are really uh, done with, uh, with all the whole workload, the data is automatically shown on the screen in our system. So that's really a cool thing. So we can do, with Code Engine, we can do on-demand spin-up of, uh, of nodes, and also the number of uh, nodes which we use in a cluster, uh, we, we can steer that one via uh, the, the number of data uh, we need to process, ending up in a system that can calculate up to 100 or 100,000 um, CPU cycles in just a couple of seconds and for really large start, only a couple of minutes, you have to wait and then this whole processing is done. And the great thing for us also is that we can do this one for with a single app, but for single tenants, but multiple users also. So it's really, uh, I think it's really a great example of what you, what you can achieve. Um, having code engine and also the code engine CLI functionality in place. Yep. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, I think it's a great example sort of of how you're using you know, like a traditional cluster to do sort of your steady state stuff. And then as customer demand comes in, yeah, right, you're, exactly. sort of, you're sort of bursting out to the cloud and, you know, and, and scaling up serverlessly. And when you're done, it all collapses back down to zero without you having to worry it. Yeah, exactly. And this is also really cool that we can do this and behind our solution as well. So yep. uh, we're, we're really flexible in on-demand burst loads. It's really cool to see this uh, one working yeah, in practice. Very cool. Um, do we have any uh, moderator? Do we have any questions from the audience? Because I think we've got about, I don't know, like four minutes. No audience questions I see from the moderator. OK, I, I think we're done, Paul. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you very much for kind of tuning in. Um, Google Maven Blue, you'll find them. It's the first hit. Um, or in Google IBM Cloud Code Engine, super easy to find as well. And a bit of spin yourself. Um, thank you very much for your time. And thanks, Paul. Bye. Nope. Bye.